traditional fairy tales, myths, and legends from around the world, who is a professional actor, a librarian, and a teacher. He was a prolific writer. He wrote seven novels for both children and adults. He wrote nine collections of poems. He wrote two plays, eight anthologies, 14 nonfiction works and biographies, 40 books in all. Has anyone ever heard of Roger Lancelin Green? Roger Lancelin Green helped form the Inklings with C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien. He was the one who gave Lewis the name The Chronicles of Narnia. Mm -hmm. Right? His son also became an author and was considered the world's foremost scholar on author Conan Doyle and Sherlock Holmes. That's legacy books. That's what we're looking for. Interesting that you've never heard of Roger. I wonder if Roger ever felt like he didn't belong. I wonder if Roger ever felt like he wasn't good enough. I wonder if Roger ever felt like he didn't fit in. The man wrote 40 books. Very, very successful. Very, very successful. And he's sitting with people like Tolkien and Lewis. Right? By the way, he wrote the same kinds of books. He wrote some uh, fantasy children's books as well. The reason I told you about, about Mr. Green is because um, in the recent weeks, I have been hearing over and over and over again, well, I'm not sure I fit in. I'm not sure I'm good enough. I'm not sure, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I belong. If I heard it once or twice, I'd be like, eh. When you start hearing it over and over and over again, you think something's in the air and it stinks. Mm -hmm. It stinks. And Bray and I put out a little video to address this on our, our Facebook page. Uh, last week, was it last week? And I encourage you, if, who's actually seen the video? If you haven't, you might want to look at it. And I encourage you that you are sitting where you belong. That you are in a community of writers, of kingdom writers. That wherever you are in your process, whether you have heard the calling and have yet, like just kind of baby stepping into it, whether you are published, whether you are not published, whether you have an agent, whether you are self-publishing, whether you're writing uh, this, that, or the other, you belong. We all belong because we're part of the kingdom. Amen. We're part of the body. We all belong. We're all needed. We're all doing what God has called us to do. So when you hear, if you are hearing noise, shut it down. <laughs> shut it down. You do belong. You are worth it. You've got something to offer. The world needs to hear your voice because your voice with God's voice is 100% unique and it needs to be heard. It needs to be shared. And my voice doesn't look anything like Nana's voice. And Nana is a rock star. You guys are going to be like so blessed by her. But I'm a rock star. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yes, I'm a rock star. Because it would be really boring. 
he's like, me, I'm a, I'm a painter. If I only have one color to paint with, oh, man. Yeah. Right? right? We're all needed. Amen. So I encourage you that if you're sitting here today, you belong. And you fit in. And I see some new faces today. Raise, raise your hand if you're new. Come on. Come on. Welcome, 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 welcome. And it was really cool. It was really cool. And I say this. I say this quite a bit. Um, look around you because you might be sitting next to your next best friend. Amen. You might sit, be sitting next to, to someone you're going to collaborate with in the future. Yep. You might be sitting with someone you're going to go to Oxford with. <laughs> They'll tell you more about that. So, Lord, we just dedicate this yes. day to you. We are so excited to be here. Be here with you and be here with each other. Um, God, we pray that you would just um, help us to know always that we fit in. Because we're a part of you and you're a part of us. And we're saying yes to what you want us to do. Lord, we love you and we dedicate this morning in our lives to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I'd like to bring up the direct. Oh, by the way, I'm Jill. I always forget yeah. to tell you this. Yeah. I'm Jill. I'm Jill Wyckoff, the assistant director. And this is my husband, Ray Wyckoff, the director. Yeah. I was going to introduce you. <laughs> I always forget that. Thank you, Jill. You're welcome, Ray. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Good to see everybody. I'm really excited about today. Uh, I know we only get to meet once a month, and when we show up, you guys are you guys are hungry every time. I can just feel it. Um, so I just have a couple announcements. Um, we are going to be going to Oxford in 2020, um, August of 2020. So start saving your euros. <laughs> and. Uh, by the way, how many of you are getting triggered right now? Pounds. <laughs> England is pounds, not euros. Oh, whatever. Yeah, I'm sorry. Pounds, pounds, pounds. 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 But how pounds, many of you pounds. are getting yeah. a little flashbacks? <laughs> that way. Yeah. Right that. High school, but you're like, what is manna going to do to us today? <laughs> And you've seen all of her amazing notes back here, and she's got a lot to give us, guys. I'm really excited, so I'm going to get her, get her up here, uh, her, the microphone in her hands by 9 o'clock, so you have a whole hour and 15 minutes to run. Um, we did the gathering, KWA, we've been gathering since 2016. We started with five people. Uh, Jill and I were two of those people out of the five. <laughs> and Beth, who's actually here today. Beth, where's our, our, one of our originals? Beth is here, and uh, Diane Tilski's not here today. Um, and our, uh, the other one is in uh, Hawaii trying to start a writing group out there. So, um, and when those five people showed up, three people with Jill and I, I immediately felt like it was that small cloud in the sky that the rain was coming. And every month we just started gathering and doubled to 10, and doubled to 20, and then it was 40. We have 150 members uh, in KWA, and it's growing. Um, so if all of our members showed up today, guys, we, would, we wouldn't have enough room in here. Um, so it's just amazing to see what God's doing here in San Diego. We believe San Diego is going to be the Hollywood for writers. That there's number one bestsellers going to be flying out of here, out of this room, and out of uh, other Christian writers here in San Diego. God's showing me that there's thousands of Christian writers looking for a family and a home just like this. So it takes us, you guys are now evangelists, scribal evangelists. So you're going to go out there and just tell them, hey, you guys got to come to KWA and, and get encouraged, equipped, and empowered like never before. Because the, we have one mandate here. Was directed to me from God, he said, Bray, I want you to start gathering my scribes and give me room to speak to them. That is the basis for KWA, and we're not changing that. So we've created this space, we're gathering in his name, and he's going to speak through us today, and you're going to hear him clearly, and you're going to start getting downloads, you're going to start getting breakthrough, you're going to start getting instructions. Some of you don't know where to start, and some of you guys are, are, are seasoned uh, 
loving writers and you're and you're and you're just looking for that next thing. What is the next thing? Um, so he's going to be speaking to us on all those different levels. And every month is very different, but it's always the same because God shows up. That's right. And he speaks to us powerfully. I hear it time and time again. And uh, so we're really excited. We have had been blessed with a Kingdom Creativity Conference for the last three years. And we have our fourth one coming up June 27th and 29th. Um, and I say this... Uh, very adamantly, guys, this is the conference that you guys have been praying for. Yeah. This is your conference. This isn't just a conference for us to put on a conference and make us look good. We're, we're not in the business to do that in Awakening. That's not our heart. Our heart is to establish something, what God's doing, and we move and be obedient in what He's called us to do. And there's been such a strong drive for creativity here in San Diego, that we are pulling that in, and it's such a large deposit that God places at these conferences, and just, just sets things uh, at a different <coughs> level than just your gatherings, it's just a, a different, it's a higher level, guys, and uh, we're going to have uh, amazing keynote speakers coming in, we have a couple coming in directly from Israel, mm -hmm. Kobe and Shanee Ferguson, they have a word from Israel. How can you guys, we are blessed to have a group coming here from Israel to deliver a word from the Holy Land to us here in San Diego. Isn't that crazy? That's our God. That's amazing. He's crazy. He's crazy for us. He's got, he's got a word for us through uh, Kobe and Shani Ferguson. And they're amazing. They've been building out the fellowship of artists out there for 20 plus years in Israel. They have a recording studio. Israel doesn't know what to do with them. And they, and they talked with Pastor Craig, because uh, they're friends, and, and they said, hey, I, you probably won't understand this, but we've been feeling, getting calling with creatives and musicians and artists. I just feel like God's doing something, and the church doesn't really understand it. And, and Craig's like, yeah, we understand it. The KWA is being king, the business association. We have all of these creativity type events happening here because God is orchestrating it, not us. If it comes from us, it's going to fail. So you know when God's in the business of orchestrating something, he breathes on it and there's life and you just feel it. When it's man, it's like I have to force it. I have to control things. I have to force you guys to get here. And that's, that's not my job. That I just show up and God shows up and mm -hmm. you guys feel it and you go, okay, I need to be there and let's show up together. And it's such an amazing electricity that happens when we gather as his army of believers in a group and we worship him, we praise him, we, we want to hear from him and he wants to hear from us. There's an exchange that happens even in these events. You're talking to him even as you're hearing things and receiving things. You're saying, now what do I do with that pop? What, what is that you want me to do? What is, oh, that's what you want me to do. You're having a conversation with Papa God at these events. So it's incredible. And I want to give you a rundown of who's going to be there. Because some of these people you don't know. And I love that. I love no-name people coming in. Because the God just does amazing stuff uh, through that. Instead of making it, oh, it's this big name. And, and, and you just have these, these expectations. So we've got Bradley Rapier coming in. Woo! And Bradley's an international performer and creative with over 25 years experience in hip-hop, street, and freestyle dance culture. Wow. Mr. Rapier's desires to connect others to the powerful spirit behind dance that grabbed his heart years ago. And for him, art changes the atmosphere, guys. Yeah. A painter's choice of colors affects the words of a poet, which in turn inspires the steps of a dancer who hears the rhythm between each phrase. Oh, Mr. So Ravier is driven to weave diverse arts, art forms together into dynamic productions that inspire, motivate, and increase awareness of the larger groove mm -hmm. that dynamic productions that, that inspire, motivate, oh wait, a larger groove that surrounds all our lives. He draws from extensive experience in all mediums, from LA's commercial world to New York's Broadway stage. As a dancer, Miss Rapier has performed in films from La La Land to the Goofy Movie, with artists from Diana Ross to Queen Latifah, from Super Bowl halftime spectaculars to the Image Awards, 
and for countless corporate industrials. He has, taught, he has taught master classes and educated events across North America, in South America, the West Indies, Japan, South Korea, including Hip Hop International, workshops for the cast of Cirque du Soleil, Michael Jackson's One, and as an ambassador of dance and host for Comcast On Demand TV Network. And he has a gazillion awards that he's won. Um, he started the Groovaloos. I don't know if you've heard of this group, but it's a street hip hop. Grew them out. These people are winning. Uh, so you think you can dance. Uh, um, and his team won uh, the World Dance Competition. I posted a couple videos. Uh, it's crazy. And uh, he's a master choreographer and he's a storyteller of dance. Um, his initial talk is going to be Friday night and it's called The Groove Mindset. Break free from limitations and self-doubt to an authentic connection with the groove. And then Saturday, he's going to be talking in the afternoons, get in the circle, activation of your creative freestyle, and I want him to activate us. So that, that Saturday afternoon uh, one is going to be fun. He's a blast. He is so much fun, guys. I posted another video of him. He was just dancing. He, he loves to do prophetic dancing. Like, yep. He just listen to it, and he's just prophetically dancing. It's amazing. <laughs> and he leads people into those encounters with God through dance. Um, we're going to have Rebecca Friedlander. Anyone know Rebecca? Woo! Come on. She's a local here. She's, she's a... Uh, she is a full-time ministry for 16 years, ministering both locally and internationally using creative arts and music. As a worship leader, she has copyrighted more than 300 songs and released 13 CDs. Her recent production, Radical Makeovers, is a TV series about beauty featuring makeovers and testimonies of 40 girls around the world who have overcome image-related issues. She has produced and directed two documentary films, Celtic Pil Pilgrimage and Thin Places, and she also has authored several books here in our hometown, guys. We're having her, and she's going to be speaking Saturday morning, and it, her title is Launch Your Vision, Pulling the Unseen into the Scene. Mm. She is a doer, and so what you're going to get from her is how do I take what this is in my mind and produce something? So it's going to be super powerful. And Jill's going to be speaking that morning with her. Uh, Jill's got a powerful message to give to us. And it's going to be called Plunder the Darkness. And we're also going to have a special performance from her Once Upon a Backpack Experience. Yes. Yeah. How many of you guys were there when they did the choreographed dance yes. routine? Yes. Last, was it last year or two yeah. years ago? It was last year. Powerful, guys. Well, she's bringing another aspect of her Once Upon a Backpack experience, and it's going to be presented that Saturday morning um, at that session. So we're really excited for that. Um, and then I'm going to be speaking on Saturday afternoon, talking about five demons assigned to creatives and how to deal with those demons, guys. I've learned as I've been writing and I've, and I've discovered as I'm writing, I'm, I'm like, why am I so bored right now? Why am I not getting, why is this so lackluster right now as I'm writing? And instantly God said, it's a demon. And here's its name and this is how you deal with it. So I'm going to present to you guys five demons that are collaborating together to destroy everything that you guys are doing. And you're going to go, oh my gosh, it's going to wake you up, and you're going to realize, and then once you know their strategies, we can do some serious damage. We can take it to the next level. So I'm really excited to release that. And then we've got Kobe and Shanee Ferguson, which I told you about. Um, they're going to have a word from Israel, and it's called Finding Your Tribe as well. Um, let's see, what time is it? We've got a couple more minutes. Um, I want you guys all to join the, uh, real quick, we have registration forms in the back to register for the, uh, the conference. Um, it is $59 for a single or $89 for a double, but we encourage you guys to find somebody as a KWA member in here, if you're not a member, and join with them and come as a pair. You'll get $10 off. It'll only be $79 for the two of you, which makes a ticket $38.50. We've kept our tickets so low, guys. Writers' so conferences, mm -hmm. you're going, you're gonna spend hundreds of dollars going to a writers' conference. Yeah. And, it, and it's a lot of how-tos. Here you're not going to get how-tos, you're going to be encouraged, equipped, and empowered. 
And I'll tell you this, we've had so many people come out of Friday night, just Friday night alone, come to me crying, saying, this is the best writer's creativity conference I've ever been to, and you guys need to charge more. <laughs> and uh, they said, I thought I came in here to learn how to write, but I came out here a better writer. These are the quotes. These are what we're hearing. They're, I'm getting transformed by God listening to these speakers and being around all of you guys, being together and saying, yes, God, we want more. We want all of you. We want to step into our calling of who you called us to be. And here at KWA, writing is not a hobby. And creativity that God's got for us is not a hobby for him. He designed it. He is the creator. And we're made in his image. Amen? Amen. Um, so I want you guys to also join our Facebook page. It is, it's a group page. A lot of interaction. We have over 500 people on the, on the page, the group. It's called San Diego Kingdom Writers Association Group. We have the Kingdom Writers Association page that you just like. That's fine. like that. But the get into the group, that's the one where you join it. Because then we can have interaction. You can post and we can see what you're posting and we can respond and you have questions about writing, you have questions about editors, you have questions about here, or I need prayer, or I need breakthrough, what is it? Post it and we get around you and that creates a great family on Facebook. That's the power of Facebook. Not just scroll through and see everybody's happy faces and right. life's so good and you know, you've got a, 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 a family member that's dying. And you all you get depressed every time you go to Facebook. That's not the power of Facebook. That's the enemy using Facebook. The power of Facebook is us getting together, encouraging one another, praying for one another, lifting each other up, and taking ourselves to the next level. That's the power of Facebook. You guys get me all fired up. calendars, our next KWA gathering will be the second Saturday. We'll get back on track our second Saturday of the month. June 8th will be our next gathering here. Doors open at 8. And we're going to have Pastor Craig Muster as our keynote speaker next month. So buckle up, buttercup. <laughs> I've been running with, with Craig for, uh, Jill and I have been running with them for over 10 years. I learn so much from every time I'm with him. Yeah. Every time. And uh, you want to get yourself surrounded by people that are running so close with God because they just help you to run closer to God with them. And uh, he's one that, that loves to see your dreams manifest. And um, he's just a, a beautiful man of God. And uh, he's a mentor. He's, and my pastor, he's also my friend. And so let's come out June 8th um, and hear what God has to speak through him. He's also going to be speaking at the conference as well uh, with Pastor Carlette. Um, so it's just going to be a jam-packed weekend for um, that conference. Then, the, other, the other part I want to tell you about that conference is we do have a limited yeah. VIP dinner. Now let me give you the background on why I created this VIP dinner. Have you ever gone to a conference and you hear all these keynote speakers and you can't get to them? You can't speak to them. You, you have no time. And when you do, it's very, I got to get on to the next person. They kind of give you that blank face. Like, I hear you, but I'm not really listening to you. And you don't have that intimate one-on-one -on -one type of atmosphere to have a, an in-depth conversation with someone. So I said, God, if I do a conference, I want to be able to create an atmosphere where where people can come in and speak to the keynote speakers. Hear their heart. You're going to hear their heart. They're going to talk. But also just having dinner, breaking bread. It's a catered meal. Um, we're going to have paella valenciana, bringing in the meal. And, um, it, and just having that intimate time together. It's limited to 25 people. And then all the keynote speakers will be there. And you'll have a chance to, to talk and take selfies and just hang out and just have a great time and, uh, and, and get something. God wants to give you something more. And it's for the ones that want to go a little bit deeper. They want the more. Um, and uh, so we, we, we price that out as $99 for the VIP dinner. But you also have to register for the conference first. So you register for the conference, then you have access to the VIP dinner. It sells out every year. 
We've already have three spots taken and claimed, so 22 spots left. Um, so jump on that. Register, get your VIP uh, dinner code that's going to be in your email after you register. Then you go back to the registration, redo the whole thing by entering that VIP dinner code, and it opens up that secret little line that says you can now join the VIP dinner. Um, so uh, I want you guys to be blessed with that and just uh, go a little deeper. And if you feel that nudge to go and you need to go to that VIP dinner, answer that call. Just yes. go for it. Yeah. You're sowing into the kingdom and you're sowing into yourself. Um, because that money, this is not a money maker for us guys. We keep everything low. Our costs mm -hmm. all go to paying our speakers mm -hmm. to honor them. They don't ask for money. We honor them. And it pays for the facility that we're going to have in Oceanside at Grace Vineyard Church. It's an old movie theater house from the 50s. It's amazing. It seats 400 people. And our dream is to see that place packed out, 400 strong, and just, just yelling, we want more, God. And he's going to show up and give it to us. All right, guys. Did you ask about those of us here might have people that might that we think might want to come and inviting them. Yeah, you mean yeah, we want you you know people that are everyone's creative guys. We've turned this into a kingdom creativity conference. This means it's for everybody. There's flyers in the back. We encourage you to grab a flyer, hand it out to your friend, take it to your church, post it on your board, um, and and uh, get the word out. Um, let's become evangelists for our conference that we prayed for. And we start talking it up and getting people there. Because years past, we've heard people say, oh, I didn't know that happened. I would have totally gone. I'm like, we've done the best we can to try and get the word out. But we're still so many people out there. So, Especially even in the business section. I know a lot of people are in business. And like you would think, well, this is creativity. This is writing. But business people are very creative. They have to yep. be creative to do what they do. So it kind of opens up a different side of them. So in your business, what you do day to day, you know, who would be good at Ascot? Who, who might want to come? Mm -hmm. Who should be there, Lord? And be working back. Yes. Sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh -huh. uh, you want to be a KWA vision lead? <laughs> <laughs> I love it, guys. I love it. Well, let's get on to the main event. And um, Lord, thank you so much for what you're about to deposit into us today um, through manna. And Lord, whatever that she brings, let it bring come back to her tenfold. Let her, everything that she gives away pour back into her tenfold because she just wants to give more away. Lord, speak blessings over manna. I speak blessings. Let her be a voice for you, God. Let her champion you and not herself. This is never about herself. This is about championing and making God famous. And we just thank you, God, for sending us manna come. And right now, we just welcome her to the stage. She's a founding member of KWA, yes. one of our lead trainers, Dr. Manico. She needs to get set up. And we're on Facebook Live right now. Hi, guys. How you doing? Um, is anybody watching or is it zero? Letitia, Letitia Crow. <laughs> Hi. So it's being recorded on our Facebook group page so we can watch this again. But There's actually a few people live out there. Very often, so. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I have missed you. I missed you. Okay, so um, as you know, honor is a huge, huge thing for KWA. It is really my word in my life. And um, one of the things I would like to start off with is to honor um, Bray. Bray! And so, uh, Tiffany, would you come up, please? And Bray, would you come up? <laughs>
to bless you because this is your birthday, Mom. And oh, yes! You love Star Wars. <laughs> and and the with you. you've poured so much. So many personal jokes. <laughs> and so many life-changing moments. And look, we'll be here all day. Just, yeah. just open this. Just open this. It says, for Bray to, to plunder. plunder. So I need you to plunder that right now. And it's wrapped very badly because we do not like it to get broken. Okay. No broken. Keep plundering. It says keep plundering. <laughs> careful, careful. <laughs> With all the love and happy birthday in the fun world, <laughs> we say, we love you, Bray. This is a group oh. gift. A bunch of us got together. And oh, and hold on. <coughs> what, is it, what does it say on the phone? <laughs>
to face what is out there. And as an author, as a leader, I, I, you guys got to understand, you're not just an author, you're a leader. You must put on that helmet, that hat when you write. You are a leader. Do you understand that there are people that's going to rivet onto the words that you say and the message that you're giving and hang on to it for dear life? You, as the saying goes, could be the walking epistle for somebody. Yeah. You could be the only access to the Bible that they can have mm -hmm. at this time. And even for a believer, even as a solid, mature Christian, how many times have you been in the thick of it and there is no way you can even remember a Bible verse? Yeah. You can't even say, You know, I don't understand it. And all you do is knowledge and he will make your pastor. You cannot even say that word. You might be able to hear a friend go, you've got it. You might be able to hear a friend go, write in something. There is no try. That is enough. That's biblical. That's biblical. So, I want to start off with that understanding. You are a leader. Okay, do you? Do you understand that? Yeah, yes, you own yes. it? Do you own it? Own it. Yeah. Okay, this is really important. Um, I was writing uh, for an essay recently. Uh, what one of the issues I perceive in the world today. Again, 32 pages could have been written, but I wrote one sentence. Mm -hmm. In this time of history, five generations are living together in community, and at work. In the, the first generation, either was known as the traditionalists or the greater generation, thank you, <laughs> and that was anyone older than 1946, like from 1946 and older, okay? Born 1946 and older, so 45, 44, 45, okay? The next one is the baby boomers, that's where I'm at. Uh, 1947 to 1964. The next one is Gen X, 1965 to 1964. Uh, sorry, uh, 76. Then Gen Y, which are also the millennials, 77 to 97. And Gen Z, anyone born after 1997. Okay, I was looking at that, and you guys, like just even saying Gen Z, the awareness hit me. There is nothing after Gen Z. Think about that. Why did they say Gen A, Gen B? They started at Gen X. What's happening? That there is no Gen Z, nothing after Gen Z. <coughs> or in Canada. Gen Z. Mm. <laughs> Nothing. What comes? Z A? A A? A hmm. What's happening in our world? Now, I'm not, not going to go there to end times philosophy or doc, uh, uh, doctrine, but I will say we are in some of the most interesting times ever in history. And so we are going to be watching Bible prophecy come to life, we already have. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, this is the time when I have you for a short period of time to equip you so you are prepared. You cannot be prepared unless you're first equipped. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be talking about some things that's going to be uh, really important, some things that are, may not be easy to hear, but it's, remember, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So um, over the past six months, and four months especially, I really went into a deep, 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 deep dive with the Lord. And he showed me uh, three things that we must understand. So, uh, before I get into the exercises for your writing, I want to give you this as the undergirding, okay? So the three things, some of you may, or may be aware of this, but I don't know my hope today is to help you uh, reveal deeper layers of it. 
So the first one, obviously, is salvation. That's the most important one. God's got that. Jesus got that. You understand that. The second thing is consecration. And the third thing is sanctification. Uh, consecration. Real quick. You consecrate yourself to the Lord. You give everything to the Lord. You dedicate everything to Him. Right? Like, you've consecrated yourself to the Lord. And I said, God, God, I've got that. I've got that. And He goes, do you? Oh, I don't like it when you talk to me like that. What do you mean, do you? And he goes, well, do you? And I said, yes, I've consecrated everything to you. Everything. Even to my death. Like, I've, I'm, I'm okay. Like, what is it? And he goes, have you consecrated your thoughts about Ed to me? My husband? Oh. Uh, no, I haven't. So, I consecrated my thoughts to him. And guess what? We have the most amazing marriage right now. <laughs> and, and it's so it went. All these different things. And uh, it was... It was very fascinating, so I, for the sake of time, I'm just going to ask you to see if you would do a deep dive with the Lord and ask Him, what is it that you haven't released yet, that you haven't consecrated yet to Him? Any outcomes, any desires, any dreams, any hopes, any opinions, any beliefs, any self-righteous ideas of the way things should be. It is going to be absolutely liberating for you. And you watch how things will turn around. Wow. Then the beauty of that is you get to walk it out in sanctification. So it's one thing to understand you consecrated it. Then you get the wonderful opportunity to walk it out. <laughs> walk it out when your husband says something and you go, Oh, I still love you. Yeah. <laughs> I am totally consecrated to my beliefs of what that means. And to what the Lord really needs and what he really wants for you. So understanding that, okay? So part B. One, you're a leader. Two, salvation, consecration, sanctification. Please pray about what that means to you because that is what you're going to need in the days ahead. Okay, so um, I talked a little bit about leadership and what my prayer and hope is to help develop skills for you uh, challenge you in some things with all due respect to some character building opportunities and to self-awareness, courage, and action. So let's play with this idea. What would be some qualities that you would want to see in a leader, in a leader that you trust? Just call it out. What is it, sir? Honor. Honor. What is, what else? Perseverance. Diligence. In, integrity, integrity, diligence. What else? Perseverance. Perseverance, honesty. Loyalty. Say? Openness. Openness. So vulnerability, transparency. Exemplary. Yeah. Exemplary. Excellent. Enthusiastic. Enthusiastic. Authenticity. Authenticity. Sorry? Authenticity. Authenticity. Wisdom. Wisdom. Influential. Influential. Loyal. Loyal. How do I just willing to learn stuff? Yes, that the leader is also teachable. Humility. Humility. Perseverance. Perseverance. Encouragement. Encouraging. Integrity. Integrity. Okay, I heard integrity three times. That's what I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Ken, will you tell me what you mean by influential? Because I think that's really important for us to understand as well. So that's truly the definition of leadership is influence. It's not <clears throat> position, status. A lot of people think leaders have to be at that level, and the reality is there are many at levels who are not leaders because no one's following them. Amen. I love that. Do you know, a lot of people ask for fame, a lot of people ask for wealth, a lot of people ask for power, but influence is the number one gift i.e. favor, that you want to pray for, other than wisdom and all of that. But your, your, your go-to guns, your sword, other than the word of God, is to be in a position of influence. However, that said, the thing that will help you be of influence is your integrity. And that was called out several times. I want to talk to you about integrity. In math, in mathematics, there's two basic kinds of numbers, integers and fractions. 
two, the number 10, 156 are integers. Fractures. Sorry, I am an educator. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. But I am going to completely wipe out the fear of the walking into class. And there is a final exam. And you did not go to those classes. And your mechanical pencil is not working. Neither are the erasers. And you are feeling so guilty for all the classes you skipped. Okay, that is my off the board. We are going to have so much fun because I am a different kind of teacher. <laughs> All right, so fractions, one quarter, one third, two, two fifths, five eighths, okay, you understand? Now, integers comes from the Latin word, integer, which means whole or entire, okay? So the word integrity comes from the same root, which means a person of integrity is whole. Wow. Yeah. It's not fractured. And it is he and she is not, are not divided mm. in beliefs or morality mm. based on varying circumstances. Integrity. You are a whole being. You are not fractured or fractioned. You are not compartmentalized, diminished. You are whole. And uh, a few years ago in the 1990s when I was trying to reach out to the New Agers, I said, you're holy. You are so holy. W-H-O-L-L-Y. Whole and holy. You are holy. You are holy. Integrity is the heart of a good leader, of a great leader. So let's get to the topic. So, I want to teach you on being a great leader by going over a fun little game that we used to play. Hide and go seek. Right? So, we all know the game. Two to three people get together. One person has to count to ten if you want it to be really challenging. One hundred if you're like, oh, super slow. Right? And uh, the rest of the people hide and Ready or not, here I come, right? And the first person that gets found becomes the, the, is it, and then has to start. The person who's not the found wins the game, right? Okay, so that's hide and go seek. Some people call it hide and seek. Yeah. But I like hide and go seek. And I think there's something very powerful in that. Just like nobody knew why they started off at Gen X to Gen Z, there's a reason why we say hide and go seek. Mm. We're going to unpack that. So, hide. The dictionary says it is a verb. It is to keep out of sight, conceal from the view or notice of others, to put out of sight, camouflage, bury, store away, or stash. Hidden is a derivative of the verb hide, and it means kept out of sight, concealed, invisible, unseen, disguised, kept in a hiding place, <coughs> secret, covered, blanketed, wow. unrevealed. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> I find that very interesting. And Jill and I, and, you know, we didn't talk about what we we're going to talk about today. We said, oh, I got a great message, blah, 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 but we didn't talk about the components. And so, as always, you know, it is so simpatico. And so she started by saying, there's, you know, the people in the room, myself included, felt quite hidden. You know, and I want just to uh, echo what Jill said, and it is, if you have been hidden, it could be for a very good reason. Yeah. You know, it's so funny when I, um, I was going through such a rough time and I was losing all my hair and I was so depressed and my go-to as, you wouldn't know this, but I'm actually an introvert. <laughs> I can do this for uh, a specific task, but I'm actually an introvert. I like being by myself. 
I like one-on-one -on -one and one-on-one small. One-on-one -on -one thousand, which I've done, and one on I think the largest group I've spoken to was 5,000 people in the stadium. And I can do that because you can't see them. <laughs> but then you're gone, you know? So going into hermit land was very easy for me. Being a recluse, very easy. I just slid right into it. And, but then I started feeling quite depressed, like really, like black, black depression. I finally saw a doctor, and a, a naturopath, and I, I know all of this, but I just thought, um, you know, you're in this space, you're spinning, 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 spinning. And she said, to, we did um, my hormones, and uh, it came back, and I had my consult with her, and she said, so, uh, did you have a hysterectomy? And I said, uh, no, why? And she goes, you like have no hormones. And I'm like, oh, am I gender neutral? Like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have no hormones. And she said, well, you have no estrogen, like less than 0.5. You have no progesterone, no testosterone. No, I'm like, oh. And she said, and then she said to me, are you depressed? I'm like, oh, yeah. She goes, has your hair been falling out? Yeah. Have you been high in histamine or allergic reaction? Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I share this with you because a leader also takes care of oneself. Right. Yeah. So if you are suffering from unusual bouts of moodiness or swings, Please have your hormone checks and make sure it's free fraction levels and saliva testing. We can talk about that another time. That was my background. I loved it. And free fraction levels are the only ways to go. Uh, all right. So, do you feel invisible, as Pastor Joe said? Do you feel like everybody else is getting recognition for everything that they're doing, but you're like, I can't even like find the keyboard? <laughs> do you feel like, um, or worse? Everything you do goes to nothing. Like, we did that. Everything I did, I hired social media people. I hired, like, the best of the best. We launched amazing things, and then crickets. <laughs> I said, what? There was other reasons for that. Yeah. You know, someone not playing very nice and dealing with that. But uh, I did not know that at the time, so I went, what, what's wrong with me? What's happening to me? And other times, somebody said what I said and got all the credit, all the likes, all the... And I was like, wait, I, I wrote that three years ago. I, that, and I thought, okay, all right, something is going on. Something is going on. And what the Lord showed me was, if you are addicted, and I wasn't addicted, but I was looking for significance. If you are addicted or even looking for significance, by man, you are going to be crucified by them. Because the same week that they shout your praises, they're going to say, crucify, crucify. Right. They are unfriendly <coughs> tribes. Mm -hmm. Unfriendly. So, you are hidden for a reason. I'm going to go through this as quickly as possible. Day one, Jesus, holy birth, no one knew. Very few people knew. Day eight, his baby dedication, hidden months. Day year two, a visit from wise men, hidden years. Year 12, a time in the temple. And then, almost two decades before he takes his public stage. Mm -hmm. Hidden decades. Mm -hmm. Then John the Baptist, at age 30, is so excited to baptize Jesus. But what he waited for all his life was just a moment. Mm -hmm. So, what do we do in the hidden times? We practice. We practice a lot. We get the help we need, and then we practice. Federer, <clears throat> one of my favorite all time, he's classy, he's refined, he's elegant. He plays tennis, and he has a backhand that is so beautiful to watch. I could just put that on repeat over and over. Yeah. There is nothing, no one that I've seen that has a backhand like him. It's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And I was being a very good wife, because I do that now, because I have concentration thoughts. <laughs> and I was watching golf. How good is that? Was I a good wife? Tell me yes. Good I was watching golf with my husband. <laughs> And I was watching Tiger Woods, but thank God, 
was so concentrated and decided to find myself and walked it out because I watched history in making. Yeah. Did you guys watch that? Yeah. Did you see that? That was one of the most exhilarating, breathtaking. It was like I watched everything in slow motion. I want to talk to you a little bit about Tiger Woods. He sank that putt and won his fifth Masters green jacket. He came in from behind. How many times do we feel like we're coming from behind? Yeah. Everybody is so far ahead of us. They've published a whole series. They've got children's books coming out. They're doing poetry. They've got a beautiful experience and counter on production from their, their autobi autobiographical encounter. Like seriously, how many times do you feel you're behind? There was 22 years between his major wins. Oh, is he that old even? Right? <laughs> People were cheering him eventually. Tiger, tiger, tiger. Nathan, Nathan. Jen, Jen. Judy, Judy. Jen, Jen. Like you could feel it. And just as they were cheering for them, I, you cannot tell me that there was not a part of you that, I wonder if someone would cheer for me. I wonder if someone's cheering for me. It's called prayers. It's called prayers. And then when he won, everybody said, Tiger's back. <laughs> Megan's back. You're back. Everyone wants to cheer an underdog. And they cheer not with your typical golf clap. <laughs> <laughs> they were cheering like soccer fans. Hello? They were cheering like soccer fans. Why? Because where he came from to that moment was so, the chasm was so deep, so far, so vast. It was exhilarating to watch. Even intoxicating. At three years old, he says, I'm going after Jack Nicholas. Seriously? Three. And every day he practiced. People started to idolize them. Sometimes that happens when you get into the public eye. But oh, how fast they turn and forget you. If you are not on Facebook for two weeks, your analytics changes, your logarithms change, and people forget you. They're on to the next thing. And what we didn't know about Tiger was he had a head in life, good and bad. He practiced, but he didn't have a real tribe of believers with him. And so he fell. There was scandal. There was disaster in the family. But he picked himself back up. And he understood a principle that you don't have to be a believer to understand is you never give up. You never give up. We love the underdogs. We love the one who comes back and fights against all odds and makes it. So if you have a manuscript, if you have an idea, breathe life into those dry bones. Say, get up, get up, get up. Bray's gonna talk to you about the five, I was gonna say the seven woes, but the five. <laughs> I already did that one. <laughs> <laughs> the five demons who strive to stop you. Okay, and the, here's the other thing. With significance, you do not seek to make yourself great. You never seek to make yourself great. You seek to do great things so the Come great on. one is seen as great. Come on. So the, the whole point of this is understanding that your seeking for significance is really the enemy coming after you about your identity. You cannot wonder about your identity. And the only, only thing you must know is who died for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. And he did it only for you. He would have done it only for you. He did do it for you. And many years ago, the Lord showed me, I said, why was Jesus sweating blood? Why was he even crying tears of blood? And, and it, it's, um, it was very interesting. I cannot watch certain things on TV or movies or screens. I can't, I, I, uh, uh, it's even the, psych the psychology 
of what is happening, uh, I can't take that in, and I cannot see a visual of it. And then the Lord, Holy Spirit said to me, that's what Jesus had to do. At that time, 2,000 plus years ago, he had to see not only what had happened for all his beloved ones, from what Nero, Nebuchadnezzar was doing, Herod, he not only had to see all of that, he had to go ahead in history. Wow. He had to go ahead and see what was happening in sex trafficking. He had to see what was happening in your life. Wow. He had to see the abuse of animals. He had to see what ISIS was doing. He had to see that a baby was being used as a human shield. He had to see, 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 he had to see everything that was going to happen from that moment and on. And that is why, despising the shame, he went to the cross in the joy of you. So have you ever doubted your significance? Have you ever doubted your identity? Think about what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. You will never question who you are again. Mm. Okay. Great Michelle, I loved it. That he wrote on a meme recently. And he says, our job is not supposed to be famous. Our job is supposed to be faithful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. so good. Oh, okay. So, side note. Have you guys seen uh, an Instagram uh, meme uh, account? Sorry. It's called Preacher Sneakers. Mm -hmm. oh, so sad. So, it features preachers with $5,000 sneakers mm -hmm. on stage. Mm -hmm. It features very well-known pastors on stage, fully decked out with Gucci shoes, Gucci socks, Gucci, like the, the, the line down here, the, the pants, the belt, the briefcase, the watch, everything. Okay, you guys, we have to be above reproach. I don't begrudge, please understand my heart, and if we're live streaming, please understand my heart. This is not about you enjoying some things in your life. This is not about that. But this is about exalting and idolizing something else. And what are you teaching as a leader? What are you teaching as a leader? That it's okay. And some people say, well, I didn't buy that. Um, it was given to me. Okay. Then I have two other things. One is that they know you would like those things is another issue. And that's nothing wrong with that. But don't use it on stage when you're asking for money to help the poor. Yeah. 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 Don't ask. <laughs> then deliver. Give great uh, words, give great and excellent message, serve others, give, but don't ask for money. Because you just got $6,000 uh, $6, pair of sneakers. You don't have the right to ask. As far as I'm concerned, it's personal opinion, personal opinion. Okay, or if somebody gives that to you, then wear it privately. But you can't be on stage and be incongruent without integrity. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, how do we get over this hiding thing? One, trust God's plan for you. He has a plan for you. Everybody loves Jeremiah 29 11. But we all know that when you take a verse out of context, you don't really understand what is happening. Read. Yes. 12 and 13, but read the whole chapter. Do you know what it says? I will tell you. 29 love. I won't read all of it, but okay. hey, okay. you guys, I love the comparative Bible on Bible Gateway. And when I study, I cannot be on the computer because I will go down rabbit trails looking at what color did this tribe wear? And why, did they, why did they chant that? So, um, so I printed out and I'm not going to... So here is what he says. I'll just read part of it. It's a message. This is the message from God of the angel armies. Okay, you guys, we're in an army. Israel's God to all the exiles have taken from Jerusalem to Babylon. This is what the Lord says to us in the time of our hiding, in the time of our wilderness, in the time of not being seen. He says, build houses 
and make yourselves at home. Put in gardens and eat what grows in that country. Marry and have children. Encourage your children to marry and have children so that you will thrive in that country and not waste away. Make yourselves at home there and work for the country's welfare. Pray for Babylon while you're there. Pray for your hidden place. Pray for the people who don't see you in the hidden place. Pray for the people that are hiding with you. <laughs> <laughs> If things go up, if things go well for Babylon, things will go well with you. Yes, believe it or not, this is the message from God of the angel armies, Israel's God. Don't let all those so-called preachers and know-it-alls who are all over the place there take you into their lies. Don't pay any attention to the fantasies they keep coming up with to please you. There are a bunch of liars preaching lies and claiming I sent them. I never sent them. Believe me, God's decree. I'll show up and take care of you as I promised and bring you back home. I know what I am doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you. Not abandon you. Plans to give you a future and the hope that you hope for. When you call on me, when you come and pray to me, to me, not the sneaker guy. Sneaker guy. <laughs> I will listen. When you come looking for me, you will find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me and want more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. God's decree. Yeah. Yeah. Later on it says, but for now, because you've taken up with these newfangled prophets who set themselves <laughs> up as Babylonian specialists, spreading the word God sent them just for us, God is second, setting the record straight. You guys are leaders. We have to lead well. Trust that God is positioning you and he has plans for you. In your hiding place, practice. Practice. And seek to only exalt him. Honor him. Don't look for man's awe. The world and earth will hate you, so why are you looking for significance from them? That's right, that's right. It took me a long time to break off the fear of man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, some of you know my background, my history. It wasn't pretty, it was very ugly. And um, rejection was huge in so many ways, uh, not only from my family of origin, but as a, a race, mm -hmm. as an ethnicity. I was, my life was threatened many times. So rejection was like in my blood, unfortunately, until I pleaded the blood of Christ, which is now in me now. So I digress, but you guys talk about your identity. Think about this. If Jesus was not of Joseph by blood, then whose blood did he have? God. He had God's blood in him, which made him different. He, yes, he had Mary, but he had God's blood, so his power, <coughs> his authority, his name, and his characteristics. Mm. And so because you are his child, guess what? Yeah. You are reborn. You have his blood, his name, his characteristics. Okay, 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 okay. So, um, all right, number two, trust, trust God's positioning for you. Sometimes it is easy to hide. It is. But those boundaries are for your healing. It's not for your hiding. Mm -hmm. So if you're hiding out, it could be, come out, come out, wherever you are. And if someone is hiding in your life, go and seek them. Fight for them. Go after them. I have so much to say, but I want you to get into some exercises. Um, the last thing is trust God's timing for you. So the first one is plans for you. Second one is position for you and where you will go and what you will do and who you will speak to and who you will have influence for and over. And the third one is his timing. He will propel you at the right time so you won't get hurt. So the reason you could be hidden 
is because there's something that has to be so consecrated in your character that when you are finally revealed, that was one of the adjectives, that you don't get hurt. Some people said, well, I'm not happy being hidden. <laughs> well, then are you going to be happy being persecuted? Are you like, would, would, you, would you know what to do? Right? Like, seriously. Mm -hmm. And then and they said, well, I don't, I don't want to be persecuted either. Well, get over it. It's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh. Yes. I'm going to read something that I read. I forget. I, I couldn't find the author, so um, uh, I attribute it to the unknown author. He says, son, you should know one of my characteristics, that I am a god of war. You live in a war zone. There are casualties every day. You and I are fighting for the souls of men. I lead an army of angels. I have made many of my sons and daughters warriors too. Samson was one of my sons. I supernaturally empowered to defeat his enemies. When he came to the Lehi, the Philistines came shouting at him. The spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the ropes that were on his arms became like flax and were burned with fire, and his bonds broke loose from his hands. He used a fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand, and took it and killed a thousand men. There are times that my sons and daughters need to be warriors. I created them to be so. Truly, I train your hands for war. You have equipment inside of you, whether it's a pen, whether it's your voice, whether it's a blog, whatever it is, that is your job on. That is your tool. And use it well. Use it well. You know you are a mighty man and a mighty woman of God. Okay, prophets and intercessors, you guys. You guys are on the front lines like all the time. I want to read something to you from John and Paula Sanford. We have met some people whose entire lives have been a series of tragedies. The details were often agonizing beyond belief, but we often found that behind it all lay the gems of God's rough and hand and his polishing. A prophet was being trained. Amen. A prophet and an and intercessor have to deal with humiliation and aloneness like no other. So understand that while you're being hidden, one, it could be a character development opportunity. Two, it could be you setting boundaries. But three, it could be you fully understanding that you are a prophet like no other. And it is a time that the Lord is going to show you something different. I am so, so sorry, but the days of us having all those wonderful times is like, you know, from the Middle Ages to the Iron Age to the um, Automation Age to the New Age. Like, okay, there are ages for a reason. They come and go. And we are now in a new age, a very different age. And God is doing something very different. Very different. So don't look back to the onions. They don't matter. It says uh, in the message, this is what God says, the God who builds a road right through the ocean, who carves a path through pounding waves, the God who summons horses and chariots and armies, they lie down and then they can't get up. They're snuffed out so that, just like many candles. Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Don't keep longing for onions or what it used to be like. Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. I'm making a road through the desert, rivers in the badlands. Wild animals will say thank you. God is doing a new thing. A very new thing. It's going to look very different. Very, very different than what you imagined. Very different. And you are going to have to consecrate what you think should be and what you thought a promise meant into how he's going to transform it for this new day and who you are right now. It is not the same. It is not the same. And your shot, your putt is coming. Notice it wasn't a huge drive. It was a putt. You can do it. It's a putt. You're going to have your comeback too. And with a vengeance, I might add, you're going to come back. 
and they're going to call out your name. <coughs> Megan, Ken, they're going to call you out. All right. And guess what? We're in the making of history with you. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to talk about seek and go but super quick, super quick. Seek. The dictionary says, attempt to find, desire to obtain or achieve, to ask for, search for, to go to a place not yet found, to search in quest of, to discover by searching or questioning, to be sought after, to be desired for, to be pursued, and also to follow. This is what the Lord is asking us to do for him and for each other. To ask, seek, and knock. Jill and I were talking, we have a pact. If we don't see each other for a little while, we're going to ask, and we're going to hunt you down, and then we're going to knock on your door. Mm -hmm. Ask, seek, and knock. Mm -hmm. The next, the last part, which should have been before seek, but I want it to be the last, is go. Go. To move or proceed, especially to something, to depart from an old place, to endure or tolerate. This is really important for our exercises. To risk, pay, afford to its energy, its spirit, or animation. A person has a lot of go. Success, accomplishment, agreement. Go means agreement. It's a go. Mm -hmm. Good. It's approval and it's permission. Go. It's a command. Go. The Lord is saying it's go time. And he's asking us to endure so that we may have the strength and the power and the wisdom and the courage and the understanding and the favor and the grace and the influence to lead well. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you, even to the end of the age, age that comes up again. So how do we go and seek? Super simple. Remember. Remember. The Bible says in the New King James Version, remember. 164 times. All he says is to remember. Remember him. If you cannot... Okay, sorry. I digress again. Uh, I was watching... I always had TVN in the background just for, you know, or they saw just something holy <laughs> in the background. <laughs> and even when I'm gone, it's playing. And in the other parts of the house, I have, you know, Alexa playing Christian worship music. I happen to be writing and working and I hear someone giving a testimonial for a Bible college that they were going to. And she had Sjogren's syndrome, it was an uh, autoimmune, it was debilitating, she was at her last legs. And she said, I went to the Bible college and I heard the pastor say, you will be healed because the Lord says you will be healed. He goes, but until your spirit man is stronger than your natural man and the pain you are feeling, you cannot be healed. And I was like, what? And he goes, your spirit man has to be bigger, bolder, stronger, louder than the pain that is calling out to you. And that's emotional too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, one thing I learned is I'm not praying my words anymore. The reason the Lord says pray in tongues is very good. There's a reason. So we don't, we, we bypass the mind. The other thing is I don't pray my words, I pray the word. You guys need to pray the word. That's how you build up your spirit, man. Even if you don't think it has anything to do with your situation, pray whatever you remember. Remember, remember, remember. The Lord says remember 164 times, just in one version. Yeah. Oh, golly, I have so much to tell you. All right. Okay, we're going to get into F exercises. <laughs> As a leader, not only do you have to have all those qualities we talked about, um, you have to be real. You can't be holier than thou. They won't follow you. You can't pontificate. They won't care. They'll just unblock. They'll just block you. So you need to show them the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes? yes? 
You need to show yeah. them the frailties of your humanity yeah. and the glory and exhilaration of your overcoming. So, remember Tiger. Now, who is working on some characters right now? Okay. Super high. Wave your hand, super high. Okay. How is your character development? Time. Uh, okay. Terrible. Terrible. Okay. <laughs> Who's writing poetry about some people or lyrics about some people? Okay. Who is writing um, a screenplay? Or it? Okay. Who's writing? <laughs> All right. You guys are going to love this and. I get to use my overhead. <laughs> oh, 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 so I am so good on time right now. And do you guys need to jump up a little bit? Yes. Okay, stand up. Stand up. Oh, 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 oh. I want you to clap for Jesus wildly. more interesting. Okay, and then what happened? 
Uh, oh, no way. And then they got married. Oh, my gosh. And then they built a business. And then they met Bill Gates. And then Bill Gates donated t $17 million to KWA. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, then, and then it's all these that you want up here, right? Guess what your readers want? Mm -hmm. They want up there. They want down here. They want authenticity. They want your integrity to tell the truth. They want your blood, sweat, tears, the good, the bad, the ugly cry, the snot. They want all of that. They want all of that. Not for long, okay? Not for long. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Because if we, I get to put the colors so bad. If we did this forever, it's boring, right? So the, the key to great writing is duration, yes? You want to punchline it. Boom, 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 up and down. You want to take them on a magical mystery tour of a ride, an adventure, an encounter, like they will always remember. And you can do it one line at a time. You could do it one paragraph at a time. You could do it one story line at a time. You could do it one book at a time. It doesn't change. It doesn't change. So how do we do that? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> hey, okay. Have you ever wondered, I just digress for a short period of time, for one second, one story, but it will not make sense. Have you ever wondered why Jesus said, I'll read it in the message. Simon, stay on your toes. Mm -hmm. Satan has tried his best to separate all of you from me. Like chaff from wheat. Simon, I prayed for you in particular that you do not give in or give out. When you have come through the time of testing, turn to your companions and give them a fresh start. The Passion Translation, Peter, my dear friend, listen to what I'm about to tell you. Satan has demanded, demanded, he didn't ask, he demanded to come and sift you like wheat and test your faith. But I have prayed for you, Peter, that you would stay faithful to me no matter what comes. Remember this. After you have turned back to me and have been restored, make it your life mission to strengthen the faith of your brothers. Okay. Jesus, like, why did you just do the holy intercept? Like, <clears throat> why didn't you do that? You couldn't. Or just say, look, Satan's coming after you, but this is, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to stop it, and this is what you're going to do. You're going to pray, you're going to fast, you're going to dip in the pool of Shalom, you're going to do this and that, and it's going to be good. We're going to be good, simpatico. But he didn't do that. He warned him. He equipped him so he could be prepared. Why did Jesus just pray for him? Because he knew that the coming back from this failing is going to be so good and help so many people. I wrote in my book, Made for More, which is in 14 countries. Just a Come on. Brag. Come on. <laughs> okay, no, seriously. Okay, so I wrote in my book something else the Lord showed me when I was working with uh, a lot of um, lost people. I, I, won't, I won't go over this. Okay, so as I was teaching them, I said, God, oh, here we are again. I, didn't we do this? Didn't I, didn't I learn about boundaries already? Oh, come on. Why are they uh, hurting me again? Why are they stealing from me again? Why are they doing this? What, and, I, and I thought, why am I always going around in circles? And he goes, but you're not. He goes, the next time, five years later, you're going up this way. And then you're going up this way. And then you're going up this way. And eventually, he showed me. And I was so excited because he, he gave me a visual in my 30s to help me understand that I wasn't a loser, that I wasn't a failure, that I wasn't stupid, useless, and good for nothing, like my parents had always said, my, my stepfather, my mother, not my dad. Um, but he showed me that this is really a mountain. And as you go around the mountain, the first part is the circumference. It's the widest part. It's the biggest part. It's the longest part. But every time you go up, 
Yes, it's the same lesson. It's the same lesson, but you're going up. And you're doing it again in time. But guess what? The circumference is smaller. It's going to take shorter time for you to, to get to it. Then another lesson. And then by the time, as you get older, your turn around that mountain is going to be so fast because it comes with age. It's called wisdom. It's called wisdom. And here's, here's the other thing. Why I'm, okay, we're going to do the exercise in one second. Why this is so important for you, especially if you're going through something right now, is, you know that saying, if they show you once who they are, believe them? But you know, that's not fair. Because I was a goofball in my 30s. I would hate for somebody to say that's who she always is. Come on. I have grown so much by the grace of God and by wonderful mentors like Pastor Greg, who Greg has spoken into my life, and you and your amazing wife. But every time notice, you're here, you're here, you're here, you're here. You have a different perspective. It's good. You're going up a mountain. Yeah. And guess what happens when you go up a mountain? You get higher. Yeah. And what do you, and I wrote about this in May for more. I took my son on a hiking trip up a mountain, a 7,000 foot mountain, and we hiked. Guess what you do at the top of the mountain? You look down a little bit, but you really look out, don't you? You never look down. You don't look back. You might go, oh, wow. But notice when you're looking down, you can't see all the different things you've overcome. You can't see all the pathways. But when you're at the top of the mountain, you see other mountains. Come on, that's You great. see other places that you can go. And when you're up there, what we did, when people were struggling to come up, we said, go this way. Go, this is the way. Go this way. This is the better path. Oh, thank you. So that's what I want you to understand as you are going to do this exercise. I want you to think about one character that you're writing. It could even be you. It could even be you. You got, you got that person in mind? All right. I want, you, I want you to talk, tell me about this person. I want you, I want to know, I'll write it in here. Okay, I want you to tell me what matters to them. Write it up. What matters to them? Who is this person? What matters to them? What is the color of their hair? How does it move in the wind? What do they hate? What do they love? It can even be you. If it's you, it's even better. Mm. Hmm. But you're going to write it as if it's a character. What touches their hearts? What makes them cry? What do they dream about? Super fast, just bullet points. Boom, 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 boom. How, how, how tall are they? What does their teeth look like? Do they belong to a social group? Do they have children? How old are they? Is she on the PTA? Does he, is he the soccer coach? Super fast. Write down at least 10 or 12 things about this person, this character, or you. Mm.
she, if she pushed like you, she pushes you know very hard to be, be his best. She hates seeing him hurt. She hurt by anyone, especially the, especially those who are coming after them. She is the first person who she know responds to. She's the first person who she know relies upon when he is in trouble or needs some help. And she's also one of the few people, one of the few people to be by his side when his demonic accident occurs. Okay, so that is awesome. You've described her personality. And that's amazing, and this, the, pers the person she interacts with. What I'm going to ask you to do is work on this um, at home. Tell me about her height. Tell me about her fa facial features. Does she have the mole? Does she have what the, the color of her eyes? I want you to know your character so well, because nobody follows boring people. They have to be so seared in your brain, in your mind, that when you're writing, you know you can describe everything in a nanosecond. Why I want you to do this is because heroes get followed. The average person doesn't. They're just ancillary players in your story. And that's okay, that's okay. But in order to be memorable, to be remembered, one or two of your people, it, it, it doesn't matter if it's even in a blog, has to be so memorable that when you write about that person, even if you just describe their hair, her velvet hair, you know, and then the other thing which we won't get the chance to do, we'll do another time. I'm going to show you an exercise how to make up words out of nouns. That's really fun. Okay. Um, Exercises, but one requires you guys to move around a little bit. You you open to that? Mm -hmm. yes. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So this is an exercise on how well you communicate. So I need you to get into. Okay. First, hear the uh, the uh, directions. You're gonna get into groups of three. There'll be a person A, a person B, and a person C. Person A and B has to be back to back. They cannot face each other, and they cannot see what's in front of them, okay? They, like, person B cannot see what's in front of person A. Person A cannot see what's in front of person B. Person C is going to be the neutral observer, and you're going to take notes. You're going to take great notes. Okay, person A is going to have, I'm going to give you something. And get into your groups now. And then, um, and then I'll, I'll give person A what I need for you to have. Okay, quickly, we were, I need you to move like in 60 seconds. Back to back, back to back, person A and B, and person C is the neutral observer and can sit anywhere. We gotta move super fast. Stay standing, stay no, uh, uh, no, you can sit. A and B sit, back to back. Okay guys, we're gonna end this video. All right, um, super fast, super so much fast. interaction with this, but this is a first a live KWA. You can stand, you can gathering. sit, whatever is easy. Guys so much. All right, person Next A. Next gathering will be June 8th. Uh, oh, what? June 8th. We, you need one more person. And this this guy right here is going to be a keynote speaker. For one group. Is there? <laughs> okay, good. Neil will be. Okay. Right All right. All right. Everybody ready? I need person A to raise your hand. Raise your hand. Person A. KW Junior. Person B. Right I need you to this, close your eyes. Point into the eight fifteen year Okay. Person A. Make sure you guys register for the Kingdom Creativity Ra Conference. Keep your hands raised until I come by. Person B. I need you to close your eyes.